purchasing volume has fallen for both Premier Protein and Dimatize, yet total revenues for the brands keep climbing. What's going on here? So I'll get to my thoughts around that introductory statement slash question a bit later in this content. But as I normally do with my quarterly financial content of publicly traded functional CPG brands, I will use the recently filed earnings report notes I took during the earnings conference call and any like relevant publicly disclosed news. In this case, it's for Bellring Brands and their fiscal 2022 quarter four to obviously update you on the performance of the brands that are within that portfolio, but also use it as a backdrop to discuss market insights within the active nutrition formats of liquids, powders, and bars. That being said, let's start at some of those revenue numbers. Net sales for Bellring Brands this quarter was $379.2 million. That was up 11.5% year over year and also up 2.3% on a quarter over quarter sequential basis. Looking at the sales by brand, Premier Protein had net sales that were up 10.1% year over year. This was coming from a pretty substantial pricing increase because brand volumes were down 9.2% year over year. If we just isolate the Premier Protein RTDs, that product category for the brand had net sales that were up 9.2%, but again, associated volumes were down 9.1%. Looking at Dimatize Nutrition, that brand had net sales that were up 31.6% year over year. They had considerable volume declines in the quarter, though of 15.1%. I'll give some more detail later in this content about why both Premier Protein and Dimatize struggled with their comparative volumes. Bellring Brands has also mostly hidden the quarterly performance of the kind of other category, aka the Power Bar brand at this point, mostly because the sales have become immaterial to the portfolio. Now, over the last 12 months, Bellring Brands sales were made up of predominantly Premier Protein at 81%. Dimatize makes up 15.4% of the total revenue, and the other brands, like I said, made up the remaining 3.6%. So some quick math would tell you that Premier Protein generated $1.11 billion in revenue over the last 12 trailing months. Dimatize has generated $211 million in revenue, and then these other brands have generated $49 million. Another way to kind of break down sales over the last 12 months for Bellring Brands would be by product format. Revenue mostly comes from those protein RTDs that are on the Premier Protein side at 79%. Powders make up 18%, and then nutritional bars and other formats make up the remaining 3%. In terms of the last 12 months of revenue by sales channel, Bellring Brands is most successful in the wholesale clubs and mass retailers. The portfolio's two biggest customers are Costco and Walmart slash Sam's Club, which account for 63.5% of the total revenue. There's no other key customer risk, which is when a customer accounts for more than 10% of a company's total revenue. Bellring Brands is mostly a domestically focused brand portfolio with 88.7% of its last 12 months revenue coming from the US market. Now I want to kind of shift this content into two deep dives like I normally do. I'll start with Premier Protein's RTD shakes, but also we'll discuss Dimatize's protein powders. Overall, the RTD liquid subcategory of convenient nutrition has shown extremely strong growth during the pandemic era compared to historical rates. This effect has started to fade, though, as the last months are trending closer to only two times the historical average in the category. This has given Premier Protein a strong wave to ride, but a combination of capacity constraints, strong 2021 comparatives, little to no trade promotions, and a voluntary product recall has started to challenge the brand, which you can see across consumption data across all major track channels over the last 13 weeks. The club channel, which is by far the biggest sales channel for Premier Protein RTDs, is down 10.5%. Alternatively, the brand's second biggest sales channel of mass retail is up 12.4%. Grocery and e-commerce showed mixed results in the quarter, but both were down year over year over the last 52 weeks. Consumption trends for both tracked and untracked channels for Premier Protein RTDs was down 5.3% year over year, which is three percentage points worse than last quarter. The last 52 weeks consumption was also slightly down for Premier Protein's RTDs. 
Shipments were stronger as production capacity constraints lessened and the brand was able to add about two weeks of trade inventory, which is getting close to the target levels again. Household penetration for the entire Premier Protein brand is at 6.2%, which has fallen throughout 2022 compared to the high of 8.1% last calendar year. This softening of brand household penetration could be stemming from deal-seeking buyers temporarily exiting due to the lack of promotions. That being said, the brand's buy rate has increased year over year as loyal customers bought more product over the last year. The brand continues to have strong upside as the RTD liquid subcategory of convenient nutrition. Household penetration is only at 24.8%. This is compared to more than double that for the convenient nutrition category overall. Premier Protein's market share fell a bit from the last quarter, reaching 18.4% of the total RTD liquids category of convenient nutrition. This is primarily related to a slight decline year over year in total distribution points in all commodity volume. Now, shifting this content towards the dimatized nutrition protein powders, it has really been a pleasure for me to watch the turnaround of this legacy sports nutrition brand over the last three years. When the world changed, Dimatize embraced that challenge and is now benefiting from that evolution. The brand has seen huge consumption gain across almost all of its sales channel in the last 13 weeks and is now the top selling or second ranked sports protein brand in most all of its key retailers. Mass retail was up 82%, grocery was up 95%, specialty was up 41%, and e-commerce was up 37%. The only blemish is coming from the club channel that lost all of its comparative revenue last quarter, which signals a lost merchandising slot. Leadership remarked that Dimatize was the number one item in that club account set for powder, but they weren't happy with the price increases that were passed to them. That retailer has since reversed that decision, so this is a temporary discontinuation. Overall, even though the brand was facing some very strong comparative numbers in 2021, Total dollar consumption sales of Dimatize in tracked and untracked channels still grew this quarter at an impressive 31.5% and 33.5% for the last 52 weeks. Powders are becoming more mainstream, and the category proliferation has created an environment where more consumers are purchasing performance nutrition position products at grocery stores and mass retailers. This is a central reason why total distribution points in all commodity volume percentage or Dimatize are at all-time highs for the brand, even with supply chain challenges and inflationary price actions. Now, let's shift into a quick Bellring Brands operational update. Firstly, gross profit margin in the quarter was 32.3% of net sales, which was up a massive 410 basis points year over year, but down sequentially at 10 basis points quarter over quarter. This year-over-year kind of positive spike in gross profit margins can be attributed to substantial pricing actions to offset significant inflation. In addition, Bellring Brands lapped a prior year period that included hefty promotions and supply chain inefficiencies. Now, I want to cover what I was mentioning in the introduction. Premier Protein and Dimatize both saw declining volumes in the quarter, yet pricing more than offset it to create a net positive to the top line revenue number. While both are trending similarly, the cause for volume declines is much different between the two brands. With Dimatize, they went through a skew rationalization that spanned both products and flavor variants. The ISO 100 powder family makes up about three-fourths of the total Dimatize business, and with that being a high dollar per pound product, cutting the long tail products that are the opposite of that causes an outsized decline in volume. With Premier Protein, this volume decline had a lot more to do with stock issues. Yes, lack of promotions hurt some buyer groups. Yes, price increases also caused somebody to like, trade out of the protein RTDs category, but the power of the brand comes through in its velocities. They noted holding four of the top RTD category's highest velocity items in track channels. Most of these store inventory issues are because of the outsized demand compared to the available supply, but a part of that gap is being caused by the voluntary product recall that was initiated by one of the company's contract manufacturers. How big of a problem did this cause? Well, maybe not as much problem at all based on the information that I found out throughout this quarter's financial documents. 
There are like, two things to note. One, the supply constraint, which seems substantial because of its more than seven months of lot numbers, but it comes down to a contract manufacturer that only produces less than 2% of the total Premier Protein RTD protein shakes. And then secondly, the brand's reputation, which could have been impacted adversely, but it seems unblemished from Premier Protein sustaining the highest net promoter score in the category. Well, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that slightly less than 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel for some reason or another, and really that kind of makes me pretty sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.